Well, good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Paul Gross in once again for Brandon. He will be back next Monday, by the way. Uh, temperatures a little uh, across the board here. Depends who's getting showers and who's not. But we have 54 in Port Huron, only 48 at Mount Clemens. Metro Airport was 54 with a shower last hour, now up to 58 degrees. But uh, uh, generally, it's 50s across the area with some spots actually near 60 degrees. So a mild start to the day. And we've had a few scattered showers come through the area now. And then there's another little line that's trying to develop and that's going to be coming in here in the next two to three hours. Not everybody necessarily getting a shower or a thunderstorm, but we're all at risk and some of us will have some wet roads as we head into work this morning. So for the day ahead, again, the chance for a scattered shower or storm is this morning, especially early, and then we uh, gradually dry out and we'll see increasing sunshine by late afternoon. It's going to become windy with a high in the mid 60s. Have your forecast straight ahead. 100 lawyers now. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 4.30 starts now. Well, they left it all out on the floor last night at Little Caesars Arena, but it was just too little, too late. The Pistons are headed home after getting swept by the top-seeded Milwaukee Bucks. Plus, the District of Detroit was planned as a big boost to the downtown area and the economy, but some say that it's just too empty, and now that emptiness is receiving some national attention. Paul? Uh, well, thanks. I've read uh, some of us have had the pitter patter of little raindrops in the area overnight, and we still have a chance through the morning hours, even with a little thunder and lightning possible. I'll have your forecast straight ahead. Welcome to Tuesday, everybody. It is Tasty Tuesday around here. Time now is 4 30 on your April 23rd. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Evrod Casimir. And that's why we love Tuesdays around here. Absolutely. I'm Paul Gross. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Absolutely. You mentioned earlier that Brandon is going to be back in just about a week on Monday. Yes, we're targeting, still targeting next Monday. And we've said it's a moving target, but right now, barring any complications, and we're not seeing any, uh, we're thinking next Monday, my buddy will be back. All right. Well, we enjoy having you here as well. well. Thanks, thanks. Great being with you guys, too. Yes, it's been a great time. Yesterday, the weather, fan. <laughs> Fantastic. You can't ask for a better day. Well, okay. You can ask. It just won't get you anywhere because I can't do anything about it, but I can tell you about it. And uh, right now we have temperatures that are mostly in the 50s, but look at Howell and Monroe. Howell is 60 degrees. Metro is actually in the upper 50s. Monroe, you're almost 60 degrees. And even Port Huron, way up in our north zone. 54 degrees, so a very mild start to the day. And you can see here, now this is the first little band of light showers that went through the area. Again, not everybody got one, and some of us, it barely wet the pavement. But what we're watching, you can see it's just, it's it's slow, but it's starting to kind of come together. A little line here, some showers, and you can even see a little lightning strike right there. So a scattered shower or thunderstorm over the next few hours. And then once this activity moves out, we're going to be dry for the afternoon. It's going to become windy. And then we're going to see temperatures which will peak around lunchtime or early afternoon, maybe fall a few degrees. So we're looking at a high probably in the mid 60s and then again dropping a few degrees with some increasing sunshine by the end of the day as well. So be back with your seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But don't forget, you can always get the local forecasters app. It is free. It's downloadable from the App Store. Just search under WDIV. And when you open the app, it opens right up to what you need, Bevrod. You need the radar first. And on a day like today, you need that app because you need the radar. All right, Paul, thank you. We are learning more this morning about the deadly Easter bombings in Sri Lanka. Overnight, we've learned the death toll has now risen to 310. Government officials say 40 suspects have been arrested in connection to the bombings blamed on a local militant group. The president of Sri Lanka plans to brief the FBI and other foreign intelligence gathering agencies after it was revealed a memo warning of the attacks was issued several weeks ago, but it was ignored. Back here at home now, a fight between two women actually turned deadly on Detroit's east side. Shots were fired last night at Hayes and Fordham, just one block away from Seven Mile. Here's Local 4's Mara McDonald with more. DPD shutting down Hayes in both directions for hours as they try and figure out exactly what led up to a terrible fight in the middle of the street. Police telling us behind the wheel of this silver PT cruiser was a 47 year old woman and she, according to witnesses, tried to use her car as a weapon to hit a 37 year old woman who was in the street. That 37 year old woman is a licensed CPL holder and fired at the car, killing the 47 year old driver. Friends on the street say the 47 year old was a waitress at a nearby Coney Island and had just gotten off of work this evening when the fight started. 
Talking to witnesses on the street, they say that these two women knew each other. They were not strangers to one another. Exactly what the relationship was is unclear. A lot of theories about what led up to this fight, but right now police not confirming anything. We are on Detroit's east side. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Time now is 433 and Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan is now the target of recall petitions. The two separate petitions were filed Monday and both cite an inspector general investigation into whether the mayor gave preferential treatment to the nonprofit Make Your Date. The mayor's office has denied doing anything wrong. Controversial activist Robert Davis and Detroit resident Brenda Hill are behind these petitions. Over to Clayton Township now, a man is being uh, taken to jail after being accused of strangling his landlord and stealing her $17,000 engagement ring. Tia McLean was heading to the garage to help her roommate, 48-year-old Shane Fountain, find his wallet. But once inside, she says the Fountain had a different plan. When I'm all down on the ground, he does my hands. He puts one over my mouth. He does my feet. Then he comes back to my hands and he works at my ring. Pretty scary stuff. It was while being choked that McLean pretended to lose consciousness, hoping that Fountain would stop. Police arrested him at an Amtrak station all the way in Washington, D.C., and they found the ring that he allegedly stole at a Detroit pawn shop. Fountain is now facing multiple assault charges. A local towing company is being investigated now by the attorney general and facing a class action lawsuit. The suit alleges breakthrough towing engaged in illegal and rogue towing practices, typically charging in, in excess of $400 for customers of local businesses in Detroit and Hamtramck to get their cars back. The lawsuit also claims several businesses received kickbacks for allowing breakthrough to tow illegally from their property. It is 434 and still ahead right here on Local 4 News today. We're going to introduce you to a swimsuit designer who redesigned sexy after she and her husband discovered that they have skin cancer on the very same day. The first district Detroit was promised to be more than just an arena. But where's the rest of it and how it's making national headlines? Paul? Well, Everod, take a look. Here's the radar, and you can see back to the west here, we have a little swirl here, and there's a cold front back there. That cold front's coming through during the course of the day. Behind it, some sunshine, but in between, a little weather we have to deal with. We'll have your forecast straight ahead. Payment and zero do it signing. His son was born inside a jail cell because the mother was locked up for driving on a suspended license. And that is just unacceptable to me. If you're a judge. The ACLU says if the family was not poor, it never would have happened. It's morally wrong and it's unconstitutional. We need to put a stop to it. Now the father is speaking out, supporting a plan to do away with cash bail in Michigan for nonviolent criminals. For a woman that's eight months pregnant, she's not running away. She can't afford to pay your bonds. The Defenders, today at 5 on Local 4. All right, welcome back, everybody. Time now is 4.54. And in today's buzz, Tesla says that it is making headway in the development of self-driving cars. The company says its full self-driving hardware is now being installed in its new vehicles, including the luxury S and X models, as well as the Model 3. CEO Elon Musk says the software for that is still being worked on and will be different from the current autopilot system. He also predicts robo-taxis will be on the road by sometime next year. Target is voluntarily recalling nearly half a million of these wooden toy vehicles because they're a choking hazard. The recall includes eight bullseye playground toys that were either sold separately or as part of a set, and they were sold between October and November of last year. Target says there have been four reports of wheels detaching and one toy missing a wheel when it was opened. No injuries have been reported. And the iconic Russell Street Deli in Eastern Market is actually planning to close its doors after a dispute with its new landlord. Now, according to Ukraine's Detroit, the issue is regarding the building's 128 year old floors. A co-owner told Cranes the landlord wanted to significantly increase lease payments after needing $50,000 to replace the floors. Russell Street Deli's last day of business is expected to be on September 28th. All right, coming up next right here on Local 4 News Today, stories for you out of Detroit, Redford, and Inkster. Plus, are you planning to skip breakfast this morning? Well, you might want to think again. We'll tell you what researchers just released about what many consider the most important meal of the day. Paul?
it is the most important meal of the day. All right, we have scattered showers and th some thunderstorms now uh, developing to our west, and those are going to traverse the area over the next couple, three hours. So we'll have the complete breakdown for you, and we'll look ahead in your seven-day forecast, even to the upcoming weekend. All straight ahead. All right, headquarters. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5 starts now. Warnings ignored days before a wave of Easter bombings. One of the deadliest coordinated attacks since 9-11. Hundreds killed, including multiple Americans. Questions are swirling this morning. Why didn't authorities act on the information they received? Back here at home, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan is now the target of two recall petitions. We're going to break down for you what that all means. But first, Paul, breaking down the weather for this Tuesday. Yes, I am. And right now we have some showers approaching and even some thunderstorms. So some of us are going to have some wet roads for the morning rush hour. I will break the down the day ahead in just a few moments. Yeah, the skies seem kind of clear, but all of a sudden I drove through a rain shower this morning. Did that, you really already? Yeah, that I wasn't expecting. I'm like, okay, it was very light and then it was gone. Oh. And I'm like, did that really happen? It but did. Now it looks like we're getting some confirmation from our meteorologist. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's get on over to meteorologist Paul Gross and for Brandon again this morning. Uh, break down the numbers for us. Absolutely. There's a lot to talk about. I mean, think about this. Our average low right now is 42 degrees. These temperatures that we're starting the day with are nowhere close to normal, but then neither am I, so I guess that kind of balances things out. But look at this. Some areas are already 60 degrees, like Howell, Flint, Adrian, and even some of the cooler spots are in the low 50s, 50 in Mount Clemens the, because of that rain shower that just came through. But mid to upper 50s for most of us. So let's get right to radar. And you can see that we've had one little batch. This is what uh, Rhonda drove through, that little batch of uh, light showers, scattered showers, and even some thunder and lightning back to the west here. And this is going to move uh, right through Washtenaw County right now. So we're going to have these scattered showers and storms for the next several hours. And then by afternoon, we're going to be dry with developing sunshine, becoming windy with a high in the mid 60s. I'll have your seven day forecast coming up in just a few. Right now, let's get our first check on the roads. Here's Kim. All right. Thank you, Paul. Good morning, everyone. Well, we are looking good out there a little. Uh, as Rhonda was saying, you may run into a shower here or there, but it doesn't appear that we have wet roads everywhere. And as you can see on the map here, we are looking great. We've got green on the maps. No accidents to get around as you head out the door on this tasty Tuesday morning. Over to you. All right, Kim, thank you. We are continuing to follow the very latest developments following that deadly Easter bombing in Sri Lanka, the capital of Colombo. And overnight, we have learned that the death toll has now risen. 310 people died in this attack. Government officials say 40 suspects have been arrested in connection to the bombings blamed on a local militant group. The president of Sri Lanka plans to brief the FBI and other foreign intelligence uh, gathering agencies after it was revealed a memo warning of the attacks was issued several weeks ago, but it was ignored reportedly due to political infighting with the Sri Lankan government. And back here at home, a local towing company being investigated now by the attorney general and is now facing a class action lawsuit. So we are talking about breakthrough towing. That's the name of the company. And this new lawsuit is accusing the company of intentionally violating the law when towing vehicles that are right here in Detroit. Local force Nick Monticelli reporting live for us this morning. And uh, Nick, this alleged scheme has been going on for quite a while. Yeah, and we've been covering it for quite a while, too. In fact, if you've been watching some of our reports, you may recognize this McDonald's here in the Midtown area because it's alleged that this company, Breakthrough Towing, will hire spotters to sit here and watch people going into the parking lot, going inside, then towing their vehicles, and then charge them outrageous fees to get their cars back. That is what this civil lawsuit is about. It takes very little effort to find somebody affected by what they call a towing scam, and they'll tell you the hardest part is the outrageous fees. And when I got there, I thought it would be just 40 or 50, maybe $60 to get my car out. And the young man told me it would be $395 to get my car that I legally parked at McDonald's as a customer. Drivers say Breakthrough Towing illegally towed them, hiring spotters to watch for people parking at this McDonald's in Midtown and other locations, towing them minutes after parking, and then charging in excess of $400 to get their car back. The Better Business Bureau, AAA, the City of Detroit, and the Attorney General's Office has launched investigations. And now, 
there is the latest challenge, a class action lawsuit claiming breakthrough towing engages in illegal and rogue towing practices. On top of the high fees, the suit also claims several businesses receive kickbacks for allowing breakthrough to tow illegally from their property. One of the attorneys on the case called the situation a mafia-esque extortion racket being perpetuated in broad daylight on innocent Detroiters. Innocent victims' vehicles were held hostage for extortion payments. This scheme is unethical, immoral, and unconstitutional. All right, so this lawsuit has been filed on the Eastern District Federal Court here downtown, so uh, we should see it go through the court system some, sometime soon, although a court date hasn't been set. But, Evrod and Rana, this is going to be one of those interesting stories because, again, it's something we've been following, and uh, I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner, to be honest with you. All right, Nick Monticelli reporting live for us. Nick, thank you. Right now, Detroit police need your help on the search for a missing 16-year-old girl. Akaya Thomas was last seen Sunday evening on Westwood in the area of Evergreen and West Warren. That's on the city of Detroit's west side. Thomas's family says that they're very concerned for her well-being. Investigators telling Local 4 that Thomas is reported to be in good physical and mental condition. So if you've seen her, uh, if you recognize this woman, please, uh, this young girl, please give police a call. Also in the city's west side, the family of 88-year-old Avon Carr have reported him missing. He was last seen Sunday driving a blue Jeep commander in the area of Hubble and Grand River. He is five feet nine inches tall, weighs about 123 pounds. He has brown eyes, uh, is bald, wears glasses, and we're told he has early signs of dementia. So again, please contact police if you know where either of them could be. Also, an investigation continues after a fight between two women turns deadly on Detroit's east side. Witnesses say that the fight got out of control right in the middle of the street and then shots were fired. The area where this all unfolded on your map there is Hayes and Fordham streets, just one block away from Seven Mile. Please tell us here at Local 4 that a 47-year-old woman tried to use her car as a weapon to hit a 37-year-old woman who was in the street. The 37 year old is a licensed CPL holder and fired at the car, killing the woman behind the wheel. It's alleged the victim had just gotten off of work when that fight started. New this morning, a 40 year old woman from Redford scheduled to be in court this afternoon after being accused in a murder for hire plot. It's alleged that Kirsten Nicole Evans wanted to have her husband killed so she could collect on his life insurance policy worth more than $440,000. Evans was also allegedly saving up $10,000 to have her husband killed and met with an alleged hitman, hitman in late February. She's expected to be arraigned at 1 this afternoon. A suspected drunk driver in Sterling Heights made the decision to make matters even worse by hitting the gas instead of pulling over when police tried to stop them. Yeah, this all happened last Saturday morning when officers say they noticed the car swerving. The driver first pulled over, but then speeds off and moments later hits a sign which disables his car and he gets out and tries to make a run for it. The suspect told police that he was running away because he thought that he had warrants. However, it turns out that he had no warrants, and now he is under arrest. Can't do that. 506 is your time. It is, and tonight, one of Detroit's newest gems, Little Caesars Arena, will be taking center stage on a nationally televised show, and it's not praise that it will be receiving. No, instead, HBO's Real Sports will focus on a trail of so far unfulfilled promises by the Illich organization, the Neighborhood Advisory Committee says the Illich has promised 50 blocks of commercial, retail, and residential development. This was last April when Phase 2 of the District Detroit was announced, complete with renderings through, though a year later, none of the six projects around LCA appear close to completion. From day one, they promised to do this stuff in parallel, to build the arena, but also work on these other uh, aspects of building the neighborhood, and they have not done that. I mean, I can understand the bottom line and the bottom dollar is about making that dollar, but what about the people that's gonna make you that dollar and spend their dollars to, in your businesses? And, and promises you, were made. And if you're not keeping your promises, then why should I spend my money? Well, we reached out to a representative from the Illich's company. We reached out to the Illich's themselves, and got no response so of course uh we'll continue to keep you updated and of course you can watch that show real sports on hbo and still ahead jason carr will be taking a closer look at this story as well and what we've been able to uncover look for that ahead at 6 a.m in the carport
It is 508 right now. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan is the target of recall petitions. The two separate petitions were filed on Monday and both cite an inspector general investigation into whether Mayor Duggan gave preferential treatment to a nonprofit organization called Make Your Date. The mayor's office has denied any wrongdoing. Controversial activists Robert Davis and Detroit resident Brenda Hill are behind the petitions. All right, still ahead here on Local 4 News today, it's been billed as the next giant leap mm -hmm. in smartphone technology. But it looks like there's a problem. Yes, what Samsung quietly did with its new foldable smartphone that's raising some real questions about if it's ready for prime time. Also, speaking of prime time, it was... Well, fun while it lasted, at least being in the playoffs was a step in the right directions for the Pistons, but they are out of the playoffs now. We'll have highlights from last night's game at LCA. But first, there are already more than a dozen, actually there's more than two dozen people in the running for the Democratic presidential nomination. And another big name is expected to announce his or her campaign candidacy within the next couple of days. We'll tell you who. There's a hint. <laughs> and happy birthday if you're celebrating today on this 23rd day of April. Our Sunday China Awards are going out to Leighton Perry, turning one. Deja Charleston, happy 16th birthday to you. Jordan Turner turns 17 today. A happy 20th birthday to D'Angelo Dixon. Shamiri Arnold turns 23. And a happy 25th to Eric Cook. Kenna Simmons is turning 32 today. Nicole Peters is 39. Claressa Williams, Ivy, happy 42nd birthday to you. Emmanuel Elamin, happy 47th. Kevin Phillips is turning 49 today. And Al Hansel is 53. Also celebrating today, Mike Hashke turns 58, Don Klein 59, Margaret Horner, happy 62nd birthday to you. Dr. Richard J. Whitman is 70 today, happy birthday to you. Terry Cornahan, happy 74th, and George Skye turns 81 today. Betty Upshaw is 90 years old today, happy birthday to you, and Shanika Guyton and Markia Taylor. And a happy anniversary going out to Charles and Diana Cotton celebrating their 31st wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Love healthy. Welcome back, everybody. We do want to get you to breaking news just into the local four newsroom. We've learned that those deadly Easter Sunday bombings in Sri Lanka were retaliations for the New Zealand mosque shootings from back in March. This is all according to the Sri Lankan government. 310 people were killed in those bombings on Sunday, and so far there have been 40 people arrested. Right now, investigators suspect the attack has ties to a local militia group, but we are continuing to monitor the developments there, so we'll keep you updated on everything we learn both here on the air and on ClickOnDetroit.com. Meanwhile, in political news, Joe Biden is expected to formally join the 2020 presidential race this week. Now, the format and date of the announcement still in the works, and we don't have those details just yet. But those who are close to the former vice president say that even though he's pushed his own deadline back a few times, he is definitely ready to make it official. Early polling suggests Biden will be an immediate frontrunner if and when he makes his formal announcement. Of course, we'll have that for you as soon as he does. Paul, over to you. Well, thanks so much. And by the way, an official announcement, I am not running. I just want to make that clear right now. I am not running. Hey, wouldn't it be great to have a scientist in the White House? God, all the decisions would be logical. Isn't that something? All right, 60 degrees right now, 57, that's at Adrian, 57 in Pontiac, 55 in Ann Arbor, 56 over at Metro Airport. The wind is light right now. The wind is light, so that's certainly good news. We're starting off the day in a pretty uh, good note. It's mild. There are some scattered showers and thunderstorms that we'll have to deal with, but Ben showed the storm pin yesterday, and look at this. I'm telling you, this I would nominate this for the storm pin Hall of Fame. It, it was posted in Livonia, the Easter Bunny saying goodbye to Easter 2019. Isn't that a great shot? That is awesome. Thanks for posting that. All right. Here we have the scattered showers and thunderstorms. Again, nothing severe. It's just a, a couple of isolated downpours with general showers elsewhere. A few little strokes of lightning here. Moving through mostly Washtenaw County. We have a, one right here in southern Livingston County. There's one just getting ready to move toward you in Livingston County. And on a broader perspective, you see just how scattered this stuff is. So it's, it's not everybody's going to get it, but some of us will. And as we kind of like broaden out the view even more, you can just see it's all part of this compact little system that's coming through the state during the morning morning hours. So here it is on the computer model and the front comes through around lunchtime. By the time the front gets here, there's not much left. There might be just a stray shower or two. Skies then clear out tonight. No problems for the afternoon rush hour and we're going to stay sunny 
all the way through the day tomorrow. Tomorrow is looking like the best day of the rest of the week. But today we have those scattered showers and storms this morning. Looks like mid 60s for a high and it does become windy this afternoon. 66 again tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. Then Thursday we start to cloud up again, still 68. And now we're looking at a bit of a cooling trend as we head into the weekend. We get a, a shower early Friday. We get a dry day Saturday, but showers move in by Saturday evening. Then the morning rain ends and we get some sun Sunday afternoon. All right, tomorrow is our first weather radio campaign day of the season. We are going to be out for the first time in Ann Arbor. So Washtenaw County, this is your event. We'll be at the Meyer on Ann Arbor Saline Road from 11 to 7 tomorrow. Come on out. You can get your weather radio at a very significantly discounted price. Hope to see you there, Kim. All right. Thank you, Paul. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's a good commute this morning. We don't have any accidents to get around right now. Just getting around those orange barrels today, so we know how that goes. As the temperatures rise, the more orange barrels you're going to see. It's construction season, so let's talk about it. The east and westbound lanes of I-696 on that ramp to Orchard Lake. Maybe want to slow down a little bit because there's going to be one lane blocked in that area. That starts at at 9 a.m. wrapping up later this afternoon around 3 o'clock. It's going to continue for the rest of the work week. Friday at 3 p.m. is when that construction project will end. And then over on the northbound lanes of I-275, just before I-696, you'll see two lanes blocked. Now, this doesn't start until 11 o'clock this evening, but it's going to affect your commute for tomorrow morning. It wraps up tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m., so something to keep in mind this evening and tomorrow morning's commute as well. All right. Now All right, we have a few scattered showers, even a couple of thunderstorms in the area. Nothing severe, nothing to worry about from that standpoint. And those will end by around lunchtime, then becoming windy this afternoon with uh, breaks of sun starting to develop. We'll end the day mostly sunny and a high temperature in the mid 60s. All right, Kim, how are things going out there on those roads? Oh, we are looking great this morning. Take a look at the maps, those green arrows. You know what that means. It means we're accident free, nothing to slow you down. You are good to go on this Tuesday morning. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Kim. In good health this morning, breakfast may indeed be the most important meal of the day. A new study looked at data from more than 6,000 people between 1988 and 1994. The study found people who never ate breakfast had an 87% higher risk of dying from a heart-related illness, specifically heart disease or stroke. Experts say more research is needed to determine if missing breakfast actually could shorten life expectancy. Eat your breakfast. That's why we eat all the time here on the show. <laughs> right. It's very important, and we're going to be eating today. Yes, we're very Tasty satisfied. Tuesday. Yep. Still ahead in our next half hour, it's been part of Detroit for more than three decades. Oh, it certainly has. A popular, thriving business right in the heart of Eastern Market, and it could be suddenly closing. We'll tell you why coming up. Plus, how was he even awake? Detroit police pull over a man with a blood alcohol content five times the legal limit. And we have a bizarre arrest that happened in Thailand. Look at this. Yeah, the Coast Guard there towing this makeshift sea home to the shore. Its owner is now facing the death penalty, and he's from right here in Michigan. We are going to have more on this bizarre story when we come right back. Keep it here. Um. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 530 starts now. An unthinkable crime, a little boy fighting to survive this morning after police say his own father intentionally shot him in the face with a shotgun. In Romulus, a group of robbers hold up a 7-Eleven at gunpoint. The terrifying moments all caught on camera. Yesterday, 70s are being replaced by 60s today, and we also have some scattered thunderstorms in the area right now. We'll track them for you coming up. 70s ain't bad, 60s ain't that bad either. No, considering it's seasonable for this mm. time of the year, we'll take it. Has your, your grass finally turned It is green starting to get and, greener. Okay. I think I'm about a week or two behind you on the greening. I was thinking the same thing because <laughs> I looked outside, but then I also looked at some of my neighbors and I was like, wow, yeah. your ground, your grass is brown. Your Mine is like perfectly green. The, the flowers mm -hmm. and trees are starting to bud. You must and have done a little more fertilizing than the rest of I us. I have been out, you know, doing it relentlessly <laughs> last uh, season as well as this season. And I it's all paid myself. off. There you go. Paul, how's your grass looking so far? Not bad, but as the old saying goes, the grass is always greener on Everod's lawn, so, you know. <laughs>
that's just the way it goes around here, I guess. Now, mine's looking okay right now. Uh, 56 in Detroit. Part of the reason the grass is growing is we've had these mild temperatures recently. you got to get that soil temperature into the 50s before the grass really uh, starts to want to start growing. 56 in Detroit, 60 in Howell, 54 in Port Huron, 60 in Monroe right now. And the wind is very light, so that's not a problem. And then... In the area, you can see it's very scattered. A lot of us are not getting any rain right now, but if we zoom in, you can see what we do have. Uh, a few brief downpours. These are all moving east-northeast, so a lot of this is going to be eventually moving into Oakland County, but we have this storm that's uh, moving. It's going to come basically right across the southern half of Livingston County, and then this batch is moving through Oakland County, and this batch right here is going to move through southern Oakland County. So. It's scattered around, some of us dealing with it, some not. Now, the high today, 66 degrees, mostly dry by noon. There might be just one or two little showers left, and then sunshine developing before the end of the afternoon, and it becomes windy today. I'll have your seven-day forecast straight ahead. Right now, let's check in with Kim and see what's happening on our commute. Not much, Paul. Yesterday was just gorgeous. Yeah, well. Gotta say thank you for that. All right, good morning, everyone. We're looking great on your drive this morning. As I step aside here, you see we've got the green arrows. Nothing you need to worry about as far as access. Accidents, but let's get you updated on some construction. If you travel over on 8 Mile, the westbound lanes will see the orange barrels just before Woodward here. You'll see one lane block that starts up pretty early. 7 a.m. wraps up later this evening at 5 o'clock, and it's something you want to keep in mind for the rest of the work week. This project ends Friday at 5 p.m. Over to you. Kim, thank you. It is 532 right now, and a father is behind bars this morning after allegedly shooting his two-year-old son in the face with a shotgun. Michael Glantz now faces multiple felony charges, including attempted murder after shooting his son following an argument with the boy's mother. That child is currently at CS Mott Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor, listed in critical but stable condition, believe it or not. Glantz is being held on a $10 million bond and faces life in prison. His next court date is May 1st. It is 532 still, and now to a local four news update about a story that we covered since 2016, actually. Detroit police asking for your help to find the killer of 15-year-old Jada Rankin. This is a sketch of the man that police are looking for. They believe he's anywhere from 28 to 30 years old, stands at about six feet tall, has a medium build. Rankin was killed in 2016 in a shooting on Ardmore Street right near Six Mile. That's on Detroit's west side. She was a sophomore at Sterling Heights High School where she was nominated for homecoming queen and was a kicker on the school's football team. She recently had the playground at Sawyer Park in Detroit renamed after her. And right now there is a reward for any information uh, about her death. A man is in jail this morning accused of strangling his landlord and stealing her $17,000 engagement ring. Tia McLean was heading to the garage to help her roommate, 48-year-old Shane Fountain, find his wallet. But once inside, she says that Fountain had a completely different plan. When I'm all down on the ground, he does my hands. He puts one over my mouth. He does my feet. Then he comes back to my hands and he works at my ring. While being choked, McLean pretended to lose consciousness, hoping that Fountain would stop choking her. It worked. Police arrested him at an Amtrak station in Washington, D.C., found the ring at a Detroit pawn shop. Fountain is now facing multiple assault charges, but she was able to free herself and call police, and they were able to capture him. Thank goodness for that. 534 now. Switching gears a little bit, the 2019 Kids Count in Michigan information has just been released overnight. Yes, and it has some pretty alarming findings on child well-being. Let's get to Nick Monticelli. He's breaking down the statewide trends and what issues kids are facing all across Metro Detroit. Good morning. I want to be clear here. This is not count day for school district. This is a program called Kids Count, a report, 44 pages put together to talk about things like neglect, child abuse, poverty, teen pregnancy, all of it scheduled to outline exactly what it's like to be a kid in Michigan. It is 44 pages long and features a lot of artwork from kids. They were asked to draw pictures of what it's like to be a kid in Michigan, but for the adults, we're interested in the numbers. The first, an alarming increase in child abuse and neglect cases of 29.5%. Better reporting methods can attribute to some of the higher numbers, but there are other discouraging factors as well. 
things like the opioid epidemic um, have had a you know an impact on it, but also things like um, housing, uh, affordable housing is a really big deal. As far as poverty goes, despite a 20.6% drop in the state child poverty rate, one in five kids are still living in poverty. It really begs the question, is that acceptable? Are we willing to, to kind of accept the fact that one in five kids is going to live in poverty? And on top of that, we have some pretty significant disparities, whether you're looking at age, our youngest kids are more likely to live in poverty, um, kids of color are more likely to live in poverty. The report also shows expectant mothers are not getting adequate prenatal care. And finally, a good number to report a 30% drop in teen births. We need to continue, you know, doing what we're doing as far as using evidence-based programming to drive down teen birth rates, but it also means that um, we can't take our foot off the gas here because we still have a lot of work to do in this area. Now again, the report is quite lengthy, but it really is an interesting read. If you'd like to take a look at it, we have posted it on our website at clickondetroit.com. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News Today. Some pretty alarming findings. Nick, thank you. Video from inside of a Romulus 7-Eleven shows an armed robber pointing a gun at the clerk's face. Yeah, some pretty scary moments there. This was just last Tuesday after three men walked into the store just before midnight. Two of the men grabbed cash from the registers while the third man waited right at the door. Thankfully, no one was hurt. But the three men were last seen running towards West Village Estates. The West Village Estates right there near Ecorse Road. This morning, we are learning a Sterling Heights man arrested last week in Troy is accused of driving with a blood alcohol level of five times the legal limit. Yeah, this is pretty alarming. The 44 year old driver was stopped last Wednesday on the southbound side of John R. right near Maple Road and a breath test showed an alcohol level of 0.40 percent, five times higher than the legal limit of 0.08 percent here. Police say the driver's license, that driver's driver's license has been revoked and he actually had two prior convictions for drunk driving. A Harper Woods man behind bars this morning accused of robbing an elderly woman. This is Michael Hudson. He's charged with armed robbery and home invasion for allegedly breaking into the woman's house with a knife and demanding money. Police arrested him after finding him hiding inside of a garage. Students from several Michigan universities were in Flint to help distribute bottled water to those affected still by that water crisis in Flint. Members of the nonprofit Pack Your, pa Pack Your Back hosted the giveaway at the Dort Federal Credit Union. This is the event center there in Flint. Over 70, I should say 37,000 bottles of water were dropped off at that location, giving residents a chance to receive up to four cases courtesy of Nestle. There will be another water district distribution event at the Dort Center scheduled for this Saturday. A Detroit man who impersonated his late mother's voice has pleaded guilty to illegally collecting Social Security benefits for years. Yeah, Frank Johnson is his name, and he apparently fooled the Social Security Administration with the impersonation back in 2013. Johnson admits to, to a similar attempt in 2017 and that it failed, and that's when his scheme uh, apparently unraveled. The plea deal stated that he forged his mother's signature on checks and also used a debit card, which was regularly loaded with benefits. Johnson could get a year or more behind bars. He's scheduled to be back in court on August 19th. All right, it is 539 and still ahead. Can he be stopped? It doesn't appear that way. Breaking one record after another. It seems like Jeopardy's current champion isn't going to stop until he bankrupts the whole show. <laughs> we'll see how much money he's made so far. Also ahead at 16, District Detroit was promised to be more than just an arena. So where is the rest of it, the entire district, the housing? Where is it? Well, Jason Carr is going to take a closer look ahead of a nationally televised program about the progress. That's ahead in the carport. But first, kids, this is not the real Easter Bunny because the Easter Bunny would never do anything like this. This is a man in an Easter Bunny costume that got caught up in a brawl. And it looks like he's winning. This morning, he is explaining why he got involved in this fight in the first place. Keep it here. All right, everybody, we want to explain this video to you. All caught on camera, an Easter bunny and a brawl in downtown Orlando involving someone dressed up like the Easter bunny. Yeah, the man in the costume said that he was just trying to break up a fight <laughs> between a man and a woman, though police were not so sure at first. The man was out with friends in the bunny suit and he saw the man and woman fighting, so he jumped in 
and he tried to break up the brawl. Well, when police arrived to sort it all out, the officers thought it was a hoax. But I got over there, tried to break up the fight, and then with me trying to break up the fight, it led him to get on top of her and hit her. So then I had to uh, try different methods, basically, to break up the fight, which actually worked. <laughs> uh, relentless punching, like he was in the ah, boxing ring. Despite the big fight, which has now gone viral on social media, no one was arrested. But here's the thing. I'm wondering, why, what was he doing walking around in a bunny suit, A? It was but B, oh, Okay, who do you know that walks around in a bunny he suit? He was probably working at one of the establishments. But, Paul, did you see how he squared up to <laughs> hit did. this guy? He wanted him to know he is about that life. He landed some haymakers. I, don't, I just want to know what's going on. Wasn't it over Christmas? Remember we had the video of those Santas that were fighting? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. All the, all the mascots are fighting. I don't know what's going on. All right, 60 right now in Adrian, 57 in Pontiac, 57 in Ann Arbor, 57 at Metro. And the wind is not too bad, under 10 miles an hour in most areas, so it's not that breezy of a morning. And you can see on our satellite, here's the big spiral. We've been talking about it for a couple of days. Nice, compact, little low-pressure area coming across the state. So let's just zoom in and get real granular here for you because uh, we do have some scattered showers and storms in the area. Most of this is just general scattered light showers. We do have one more notable thunderstorm that's moving through Livingston County right now. And on a track right now, it looks like it's going to be approaching the Wixom area by about 607. So this is tracking basically through uh, the eastern part, the southeastern part of Livingston County into the central part of Oakland County. So uh, we're going to watch that storm. There looked like there was a signature that maybe suggested a little pea-sized hail about uh, 10 minutes ago. Right now, that's gone. So uh, that's the most notable weather in the area. By 7 o'clock, again, progressing across the area. And this is actually kind of interesting. Notice what happens. By 10 o'clock, that first batch is off to the east. Here comes the front. And there's almost nothing happening with the front. And in fact, by the time this front comes through the area around lunchtime, maybe there's just one or two stray showers. Most of us, this front comes through dry. In fact, the most notable impact will be that the wind is going to pick up and become gusty this afternoon, and then we'll start to see some developing sunshine for the afternoon rush hour. And then the skies will just clear overnight, and we'll have a nice sunny day tomorrow. Tomorrow is the best day of the rest of the week. Lots of sunshine and mid 60s. That's going to be fantastic. So today we have the scattered showers and storms this morning ending around lunchtime or by lunchtime. For many of us, it'll be earlier than that. Then becoming windy this afternoon with a high temperature in the mid 60s. And the temperature may be falling off a few degrees by mid to late afternoon as colder air is coming in. So tomorrow, 66, 68 on Thursday. We're going to hold off the showers till Thursday night and then just kind of off and on shower chances into the weekend. Right now, we're going to try to keep Saturday daytime dry, bring in showers Saturday night into Sunday morning, then the rain ending Sunday afternoon and becoming windy. All right, tomorrow is our first weather radio campaign day of this season. We are going to be for the first time in Ann Arbor. We're going to be at the Meyer on Ann Arbor Saline Road from 11 to 7. Come on, Washtenaw County, this is your event. We need all of you there to buy a weather radio. And listen, if you live on the US 23 corridor, the radios are discounted by 25% in price, and this thing could save your life. So hope to see you there, Kim. Well, great advice, Paul. Good to get that just before the summer. All right, well, let's get you updated on your commute this morning. A quiet morning on the roads, no accidents to worry about. So let's get you updated on your construction. Oh, over on I-94, the east and westbound lanes, we'll see the orange barrels between Connor and Gratiot. One lane block between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. This is a daily project ending on Friday at 3 o'clock. And then the east and westbound lanes of I-94 between 8 Mile and I-696. You can expect two lanes blocked there between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. This project will happen today and tomorrow as well. Over to you. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 547 and a single engine plane crash within a prison compound in California, sparking a fire and causing injuries to the pilot. Yeah, so the crash happened on Monday in the town of Norco. This is about 50 miles southeast of Los Angeles. No injuries were reported among the staff or the inmates down on the ground. Firefighters on the scene were assisted by correctional personnel in putting out that fire. The U.S. Geological Survey says that a magnitude 6.3 earthquake has hit the central Philippines a day after a 6.1 quake hit the country's north and killed at least 11 people. Rescuers are still working to get several people free who are trapped in the rubble of, that, of a collapsed building there. So far, three people have been pulled out alive, but officials say the 24 are reported missing. 
And take a look at this video from the town of Manila in the Philippines, where witnesses captured this video. Kind of shows huge waterfalls falling from down a high rise building. The videos were taken right after the first earthquake. The iconic Russell Street Deli right there in the heart of Eastern Market is planning to close its doors following a dispute apparently with the landlord. Yeah, according to Cranes Detroit, the issue is about the building's 128 year old floors. Co-owner Ben Hall says the landlord wanted to significantly increase lease payments after needing $50,000 to repair the floors. Russell Street Deli's last day of business is expected to be on September 28th. Oh, that's too bad. Sad to see them go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So many of us know the never ending struggle of trying to find something to watch on Netflix. Do we watch something new or do we just watch the office reruns for the <laughs> one millionth time? Well, Netflix might have the answer to our endless browsing. Yes, the streaming platform's Android app is testing a new feature that will queue up a random episode of any series. Right now, no word on when or if the feature will be available on other devices, but we'll make the choice for you. Yeah, there you go. All right, the entire country is on the Jeopardy bandwagon right now, watching this current champion who continues to win week after week, smashing all kinds of records. Yeah, his name is James Holhauser, Holzhauer, and as you can probably guess by his huge wagers, he's a professional sports better. Last night was his 13th win in a row on the program with the total winnings of nearly $950,000. Wow. Just amazing. shy of a million. Good for him. Indeed. The Jeopardy people, though, are probably like, darn it. He's trying did, to bankrupt them. Him? Yeah. <laughs> Time now is 5.50, everybody, here on your Tuesday morning and a Michigan man facing some pretty serious charges in Thailand. Police raided his home, but they had to set out to sea to do it. We'll tell you why he's now in Thai federal custody. That's coming up next. On the next Live in the D, we take you inside the national treasure that's in our own backyard. Plus, the perfect feast for those graduation parties. Today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. Um. Alrighty, we have some scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms in the area right now, and they will become much more widely scattered through the morning, uh, mostly gone by lunchtime. The afternoon should be dry with increasing sunshine, particularly later, and it's going to be a windy afternoon with a high in the mid-60s. Kim? All right, sounds like you're going to have to have two hands on the steering wheel today. But right now you are looking good for your Tuesday morning commute. As you can see, we've got green arrows on the maps, no accidents to get around and fairly dry out there for your morning drive. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 554 everybody and fans of the British Royals like Kim and Paul Gross, we learned yesterday, continue to be on Baby Watch as Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Uh, the Duke and Duch Duchess of Sussex, say that three times fast, are expected to welcome their first child any day now. The newborn will be seventh in line to the throne. Markle's mother arrived in London on Sunday, which has led to the speculation that the baby could be coming within days. And this news comes as reports surface the couple could be moving to Africa after the child is born. Wow, that's it, quite the development. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I never saw that coming. All right. All. And that, I know. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. I know that they love it there. Both of them have traveled there yeah. quite a bit. 555 is your time, and a floating cabin in Thailand belonging to a Michigan man from Tecumseh has now been towed to shore, and now he and his girlfriend are facing not just a prison sentence or being arrested in jail time, but actually a death sentence. This is unbelievable. The man's name is Chad L. Wartowski. He graduated from Tecumseh High School and Michigan State. Go Spartans. The couple lived in the cabin for two months before the Thai Navy raided it last week. Hmm. The pair are members of the so-called Sea steadying movement and they build communities in international waters as a way to explore alternative societies and governments. But the Thai authorities consider that water part of their country and the couple is accused of violating Thai sovereignty. The crime is punishable by the death penalty or life in prison, but legal experts expect them to be charged with a much lesser offense. Well, I would certainly, certainly hope so. so. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right, here at home, last night's episode of The Voice was incredible for one Michigan native. Members of Team Legend battled it out. Yes, Detroit's own Beth Griffith Manley took center stage as she tried to advance to the next round. 
Last week's singers competed in the first ever live cross battles where they were randomly selected to compete against singers from opposing teams. Beth wasn't selected last week, so that meant that she performed this week, which she performed last night. And take a look at how great she did. You know I can't stand it. You're running around, you know better, See, I can't stand you. Put me down. She did such a phenomenal job. It was very, very awesome it's watching her. It's giving me goosebumps all over again, and I yeah. watched it last night. She did so well. I think she is going to take home this title all around. Make sure that you tune in to find out if Beth advances to the next round. The results show airs tonight at 9 right here on Local 4, and you still have one hour left to go and cast your vote. Until so 7 a.m. Sure you, you can that. vote up to 10 times, so make sure that you do that on uh, The Voice website and yes. also on their app. All right, later this morning on the Today Show, NBC's Natalie Morales will sit down with Olympic gymnast and Larry Nassar survivor, Allie Raceman. Yes, and here's just a quick preview of that exclusive interview. This is so much bigger than, you know, than um, USA Gymnastics or United States Olympic Committee, MSU or USC. This is a huge problem in our society. I mean, sexual abuse is just a huge huge issue and I think education is is key and I think that in order to prevent abuse mm -hmm. I mean I think every single person needs to be educated and and to understand really the dangers of enabling it and looking the other way yeah very important make sure you tune into that the Today Show starts at 7 a.m. Coming up all new at 6 o'clock right here on Local 4 News Today. Stories out of Detroit, Clinton Township, and Sterling Heights. Also ahead, the impact of video games, why too much may be worse for girls than boys. One more. And movie theaters are bracing for a blockbuster weekend. The extreme lengths that they're going to for the premiere of Avengers Endgame. That more when we come right back in a minute. Be right there. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us. I'm Rhonda Walker. And I'm Evrod Kasimi. Topping your headlines this morning, we're following new developments from Sri Lanka. More arrests made in connection to the suicide bombings Easter Sunday. And we're learning the attacks are a response to the tragedy in New Zealand last month. Recall Mayor Duggan, the new effort to remove Detroit's mayor from office, plus the investigations that are sparking the push. And it was nice while it lasted, but our beloved Detroit Pistons bounced out of the playoffs, earning a league worst record. I don't even know if it was nice because we got our butts whipped every game. <laughs> All right, let's get over to Paul Gross, tracking some rain in our forecast for this Tuesday. Good morning. Absolutely. Rain and mild temperatures. 60 degrees right now in Monroe. Port Huron at 54, 58 in Howell, 56 in Detroit. So let's just get right to radar since we're all mild, but not all of us are getting rain. What we have here is scattered. Again, not everybody getting it, but this is the most notable storm. It's not severe, but we're keeping an eye on it, and it's on an east-northeasterly track, so it's going to head through Milford, Union Lake, Waterford, Pontiac, and uh, uh, this is bad data right here, this little pointy thing here, but this right here, if this was a severe storm, that would be called a three-body scatter spike. That would be ind indicative of large hail, but this is not a severe storm. At worst, we're looking at maybe a little pea-sized hail with it. We're going to get up to 66 degrees today, midday, and uh, a dry afternoon, but becoming windy. So we'll talk about the rest of the forecast through the weekend in just a bit, guys. The forecast right. was good enough yesterday for Kim DiGiulio to bust out the rollerblades. I yeah. did. First time of the season. Very nice. You could probably do it again today. It's I know. It's once we get the rain out of there. Perfect. The river walk, the Dequinder cut, you name it. Beautiful. It's a great place to rollerblade, <laughs> bike, scooter, whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, always on wheels though, right? Uh, let's take a look at what's going on for your commute this morning. It's uh, mostly dry out there, so that's great news for you guys. As you head out the door this morning, no accidents to get around, so let's take a look at your drive times. If you're headed out the door toward I-696, traveling westbound between I-94 and I-75, now that's going to take you nine minutes, which is right on time. As you can see, these green arrows on our maps means that there's nothing to slow you down. Over to you.
All right, Kim, thank you to 602 and we continue to follow the very latest about the Easter bombings in the Sri Lankan capital of Colombo. Within the last hour, the country's defense minister said the bombings were carried out in retaliation for the mosque attacks in Christchurch, New Zealand last month. The government has blamed a local militant group for the bombings, with the death toll now rising to 310 and more than 40 suspects have been arrested in connection to these bombings. It's believed a memo warning of the attacks was issued weeks ago, but was ignored. Why weren't the churches protected if you had a warning? Well, how many churches to be protected? But we informed, we informed that there is, a, we never expected a, 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 an attack of this magnitude. Unfortunately, it did happen, though. The country remains under a state of emergency and the military is operating under enhanced wartime powers. And an investigation continues after a fight between two women turns deadly on Detroit's east side. Shots were fired in the area of Hayes and Foreman, just a block away from Seven Mile. We're told that a 47-year-old woman tried to use her car as a weapon to hit 37-year-old woman who was in the street. That 37-year-old woman is a licensed CPL holder, and she fired her gun at that car, killing the woman behind the wheel. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan is now the target of recall petitions. The two separate petitions were both to cite an inspector general's in to weather investigation into whether the mayor gave preferential treatment to the nonprofit Make Your Date. The mayor's office denies any wrongdoing. Controversial activist Robert Davis and Detroit resident Brenda Hill are behind these two petitions. And questionable towing practices in the city of Detroit are now grounds for a class action suit. Yeah, and this suit, Rhonda, comes in the midst of an attorney general investigation. Local force Nick Monticelli joining us live now this morning. And Nick, I understand that this could mean money back to anyone towed by a certain business. They could be. Breakthrough Towing is the company we're talking about, and you might remember that name because we have been covering them extensively. In fact, there are some people who say, who claim that Breakthrough has spotters parked here watching this McDonald's parking lot off of Woodward in Midtown, and then will tow people's cars once they go inside. Now there's this class action lawsuit saying no more. It takes very little effort to find somebody affected by what they call a towing scam. And they'll tell you the hardest part is the outrageous fees. And when I got there, I thought it would be just 40 or 50, maybe $60 to get my car out. And the young man told me it would be $395 to get my car that I legally parked at McDonald's as a customer. Drivers say breakthrough towing illegally towed them, hiring spotters to watch for people parking at this McDonald's and Midtown and other locations, towing them minutes after parking and then charging in excess of $400 to get their car back. The Better Business Bureau, AAA, the City of Detroit and the Attorney General's Office has launched investigations. And now there is the latest challenge, a class action lawsuit claiming breakthrough towing engages in illegal and rogue towing practices. On top of the high fees, the suit also claims several businesses receive kickbacks for allowing breakthrough to tow illegally from their property. One of the attorneys on the case called the situation a mafia-esque extortion racket being perpetuated in broad daylight on innocent Detroiters. Innocent victims' vehicles were held hostage for extortion payments. This scheme is unethical, immoral, and unconstitutional. Now, this class action lawsuit has been filed in federal court. We haven't seen any dates for it just yet, but check back because we will certainly be following this story. We're live here in Midtown. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All right, Nick, thank you. They left it all out on the floor last night at Little Caesars Arena, but it was just not enough for a team that was a lot better than us. Yeah, the Pistons heading home after getting swept by the top seeded Milwaukee Bucks. With this loss, Detroit now has the NBA playoff record. That's not a good one for the most consecutive losses with 14 straight dating back to 2008. Coming up in sports, you're going to hear from Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin with their thoughts on what's next in the offseason. We still are rooting for them, though. Oh, absolutely. And they did make it to the playoffs, so, so that good. was an improvement. It's been, what, three years, I think? Yeah, so. and the addition of Blake Griffin obviously was definitely felt, even seeing yeah. him jump into the playoffs the last two games, but it just wasn't enough. 6.07 is your time. The 
Well, the flexible foldable phone of the future now not being released. Why Samsung is delaying the release of its groundbreaking smartphone. Plus, Jason, it wasn't an award show, but the stars were certainly out last night. Good morning, Avengers Ensemble assembled. The red carpet rolled out for what could be the biggest blockbuster in the history of mankind. We'll take you there next. Welcome back, everybody. It's officially time to play today's trivia. Did you know that today's National English Muffin Day? I did not. See, you learn something new here every day <laughs> on Local 4 News Today. Miss a day, miss a lot. So we are asking you, where was the first English muffin created? And I'll tell you this, the answer will surprise you. It certainly surprised me. Well, let's head on over to the clickondetroit.com if you can guess the answer correctly. And remember, you could win a Tormina's Pizza gift card for getting the right answer. So make sure you upload a photo of yourself. We'll reveal the winner coming up during our 6.30 half hour. Good luck. We're back in a minute. Um. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is 6.11 and in the carport this morning. The count is officially on. Something Marvel fans, comic book fans, and even movie fans have been waiting for for a very long time, in fact, and it's arriving this week. Yes, it is. We're talking about Avengers Endgame. It hits theaters, and if ticket pre-sales are any indication, Jason, this <laughs> is going to be a record-breaking weekend at the box office. And apparently a three-hour runtime isn't stopping anyone from seeing this movie this weekend. Last night, Avengers Endgame game held its world premiere in Hollywood and with a cast as big as the runtime there this was no ordinary premiere look there's Chris Hemsworth and Paul Rudd and Don Cheadle the Avengers Endgame world premiere was so big it was held at the Los Angeles Convention Center instead of a traditional movie theater. We owe it to everyone we lost to take a stand. More than a decade in the making with more than 20 movies and 25 heroes has led up to this blockbuster conclusion. So it's going to be so satisfying. I mean, this is the culmination of uh, 22 movies so far um, and it's 10 years in the making and this is more than just a film. It's a cinematic event. That's what I'm calling it. I don't think this will happen in a very long time. Avengers Endgame is expected to be the best box office oh opener God, of family. all time when it hits it's theaters this Thursday. Everyone. The previous record was set by its predecessor, Infinity War. That movie raked in $258 million in its opening weekend last April. Reviews are still under embargo, but the red carpet did reveal something for fans. One cast member whose character has not been revealed described what directors Joe and Anthony Russo wanted him to do. They asked me to do the fighting scene all in one shot. No editing, no stunt double from the beginning to the end. Talking, fighting, talking, fighting to the end. That was a great request for me. Honorable. Mm. Wow, real quick seeing that. from last night's red carpet we want to point out how dazzling Scarlett Johansson and Brie Larson looked but if you look even closer you'll see matching infinity gauntlet bling Thanos would be proud and he did nothing wrong now since the movie is so long there were concerns less or fewer showings would be offered and that's not the case some movie theaters are planning to stay open 24 hours this weekend. Wow. AMC theaters say 29 of its theaters are scheduled to be open around the clock this Thursday through Friday with 18 open nonstop from Thursday through Saturday. And on top of that, 17 additional AMC locations will be opening between Thursday night and Sunday for 72 hours straight. This is massive. Check your local listings as Kim DeGiulio darts in here like the Flash. <laughs> but the Flash I think it's is DC. Cool. So. All the excitement and the theater is staying open longer. It's Three like, hours long? That's not that bad. That is a long time. You see a movie for over two hours, it's just a little extra time. Okay. Uh, apparently a lot of people want to go see this one. <laughs> if so. it's exciting and it's action packed, you don't even notice how long it went. I really want to see that guy, uh, that guy scene who said he did it all Tell in one day. Yeah. That's got to be impressive. All right, all right, Jason. Thank you. Let's get over to Kim and. What do we call her the Flash? <laughs> Kim and Paul in for Brandon this morning. I have no idea what you guys are talking about, but. <laughs> Is that sweat on your forehead there? <laughs> Whatever. What uh, <laughs> let's take a look at what this is. Oh, yes, our uh, weather radio. This thing could save your Very life. Very important. Thing. I know some people say, hey, I'll just wait for the sirens. Well, the sirens are designed to alert you outside, not 
inside. You might not hear those. This weather radio could save your life in our first campaign day of the season is tomorrow. And Washtenaw County, this is your event. You've been asking for us to come out and we're coming to Ann Arbor, the Meyer on Ann Arbor Saline Road between 11 and 7 tomorrow. So come on out and see us. Hey, if you live along the US 23 quarter, come on up or come on down and see us. We would love to see you and you can get your weather radio at a special local four discounted price. It's discounted by 25%. You save 10 bucks. So we hope to see you there. All right, 61 in Adrian right now, 57 Pontiac Ann Arbor Metro. It is a very mild start to the day. Our average low is 42. So this is, we're living large here. The wind is generally pretty light. So we're just going to get right to radar. On the bigger view, you see the swirl here. This is a compact area of low pressure coming across the state and it's triggering scattered showers and thunderstorms. Most of this is scattered light activity. Some of us, in fact, many of us not getting anything at all right now, but we got that one little cell that we've been watching here moving into Oakland County. Uh, this one cell is not severe. It's just a torrential downpour with some thunder and lightning. It's going to move through uh, Waterford, uh, Independence Township, Lake Orion, and Oakland Township, and it looks like it's going to pass very close to, if not right. In fact, I think it's going to go right over the National Weather Service office there in White Lake. So, again, not severe but just a very noteworthy thunderstorm that you'll hear uh, when it passes over your head if you're in the area. All right, so the scattered line of storms will be moving out this morning. By mid-morning, here comes the cold front. There's not much going on in front of this cold front. When it passes through the area, there might be just a couple of scattered light showers. Not a big deal. The, the main event is well ahead of the front, what we're getting right now. And then once the front goes through, it gets windy and we start getting some sunshine building in. So bring your sunglasses because you'll need those for the afternoon rush hour. And then tomorrow, it's just going to be lots of sunshine. Tomorrow looking to be easily the best day of the rest of the week. So 66 the high today. Temps may actually start slipping a bit late afternoon as that cold air comes in. And again, it is going to be windy and then Basically, same temperature tomorrow, 66, but with more sunshine, a light wind. We cloud up on Thursday, showers Thursday night into Friday morning. And as we head into the weekend, notice one, we start cooling. We actually have some 50s for highs. The weekend right now looks like Saturday's dry. Showers move in Saturday night and extend into Sunday morning. All right, our weather window this morning, one of my favorite buildings in all of Detroit, the historic Wayne County building. That's the old Wayne County building right here downtown. Josh Strand out there getting that shot for me. I think he knows I love history, and that is just a gorgeous shot of a beautiful building. Kim? That is a beautiful shot. All right, good morning. It is pretty quiet out there, but however, we do have some storms moving through the area, so your commute could be a little bit of a damp one. I just was texting with my mom over in Milford. She said it's storming there, so keep that in mind for your commute. Give yourself some extra time. One accident to get around this morning over on the southbound lanes of I-75 just past uh, the Verner Highway here. Your right lane is blocked. We're seeing a little bit of a delay in that area, so uh, just keep that in mind for those of you who travel southbound I-75. And then also, I want to keep you updated on construction. I-696, the east and westbound lanes, the ramp to Orchard Lake. You'll see one lane block between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. This is a daily project that will continue for the rest of the work week. And then the northbound lanes of I-275, just before I-696, two lanes blocked there. This starts this evening at 11 o'clock, wrapping up tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. Rhonda. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 618 and we're turning our attention to today's consumer headlines. Harry Potter is teaming up with Vans. We'll tell you more about that. Also, Tesla made a major announcement about his self-driving cars. But first, Samsung now delaying the release of its much talked about new smartphone that's foldable. Let's get to Maribel Aber joining us now live at NASDAQ with these stories. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Rhonda. Samsung is delaying this release of its foldable smartphone. The Galaxy Fold was supposed to be available this Friday in the U.S., but recently some reviewers reported problems with the devices, including issues with the screen and the hinges. The Fold is priced at nearly $2,000. Samsung didn't specify a new release date for the phone, but said it will announce a new release date in coming weeks. Elon Musk says Tesla will have fully self-driving cars ready this year. He also vowed to have a fleet of self-driving robo-taxis 
ready to go next year. The on-demand robot taxis would put Tesla squarely in the ride-hailing business. Now, under the plan, Tesla owners could opt to put their cars into the fleet when they're not being used. Those Teslas would then be picked up, and would then pick up and drop off riders. Vans is teaming up with Harry Potter for a line of footwear and apparel. The company says it will offer a, quote, magical collection of items for witches, wizards, and muggles alike. Not a lot of details on what the footwear, apparel, and accessories will look like. But the social media post from Vans shows four patterns representing the four houses at Hogwarts with their mascots as part of their design. Now, Rhonda, I know you guys don't do the houses for Game of Thrones, but did you do Harry Potter? Not me, but there's a lot of Harry Potter fans out there, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maribel. It is 620, everybody. Still ahead right here on Local 4 News today. We've got a, a Help Me Hank recall alert to tell you about the danger behind these wooden toys that were sold at Target. Also ahead, video games and their impact on children. Why some may be more vulnerable than others. Next in Good Health. Hansons. Welcome back, everybody, here at 623. Turning our attention to good health this morning. Video games may be more harmful for girls than boys. Researchers tracked nearly 900 children from the age of 6 to 12, and they found that gaming did not affect the social development of boys. But girls who played a lot of video games had weaker social skills over time than those who played less often. The study also found that young kids who struggled socially were more likely to play video games as they got older older as well. Now let's get to Dr. Frank McGeorge with a look at what he's working on for good health tomorrow morning. Trying to get your teen to talk to you, it can be a challenge. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Tomorrow at 6 a.m., new research reveals the parenting technique to get the conversation started and help strengthen your bond. Alrighty, thanks, Doc. And right now we have some scattered showers and thunderstorms in the area. So kids heading to the bus stop over the next hour, will, uh, some will have to deal with that. But again, it's scattered, not everybody getting it. This afternoon becoming windy, but it will be a dry afternoon at the bus stop. Temps uh, generally low to mid 60s by 3 o'clock when uh, most of the kids are heading home. And then uh, this evening we clear out and a nice sunny day tomorrow, Kim. All right, thank you, Paul. We've got some wet roadways in some areas for your commute, so expect a little bit of a slowdown and expect a slowdown on southbound I-75 because we have an accident just past Verner Highway. Your right lane is blocked. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 625, everybody. And coming up next at 630, local stories for you from Clinton Township, Romulus, and Detroit. Also ahead, he tried to pull a fast one. Why this driver tried to get away from police. But first, yeah, we do have to talk about the Pistons being swept out of the playoffs. Bernie's going to have that and more coming up in sports. Aspen Dental. Um. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. District Detroit, it was promised to be more than just a sports arena, but the big question now is, where's the rest of the plans? Plus, the new Michigan Kids County information has just been released. See what issues kids are facing around Metro Detroit. Paul? Big news, big news. My buddy Brandon is back on Monday. Now, we have an asterisk there because, you know, barring complications, but he hasn't had any, so just want to let you know he'll be back Monday, but for now, we're tracking storms in the area. We'll have that for you straight ahead. Very exciting. We yes. certainly miss Brandon around here, as I know many of you do. I get at least a text or so a day or a Facebook post that's yeah. asking about him. So as you can see, his recovery is on track. So we look forward to welcoming him back next week. Absolutely. I've been getting a lot of DMs from people as well. So <laughs> Monday will be here before you know it. And yes. Paul said, barring any complications, but I think everything is going to be just fine. Absolutely. We In are the meantime, praying, so. let's get on over to Paul. We've been yeah. enjoying having you here. Yeah, thanks. Great being with you guys. And again, just keeping the seat warm and uh, and so excited to see Brandon. And he is really looking forward to seeing you guys and seeing all of you folks. I mean, he really is. And he misses being here and he just can't wait to be back. All right, right now we're starting off on a very mild note. Our average low for the day, in other words, the average low this date is 42 degrees. 
And right now we're starting off in the 50s, even 60 degrees in some spots. So it is a very warm one and we are watching some thunderstorms, but most of us it's just a few stray showers. We have a couple of lightning strikes here now just showed up in the last uh, five minutes here in Lapeer County, but the most notable storm that we've been watching is this one here going through Oakland County. So this one is moving on an east northeast direction, uh, maybe passing on the south end of Lake Orion, uh, Leonard Addison Township here in northeast Oakland County. So it's scattered again. A lot of us are not getting this, but a few of us are the high today. 66 degrees. The rain ends by this afternoon and it's going to come become quite windy. So I'll have your seven day forecast straight ahead right now. I'll send over to Kim and see what's happening on the roads. A little wet out there for your drive this morning. So something you may want to keep in mind and uh, give yourself a few extra minutes. Just one problem to get around if you travel over on the southbound lanes of I-75 just past Verner Highway. Your right lane is blocked. You'll see a little bit of a slowdown in that area, but right now now, that's the only accident that we have. So let's take a look at some construction. For those of you who travel through the Dearborn area, Michigan Avenue will see the orange barrels over on the eastbound lanes between Merc Mercury Drive to Greenfield. One lane blocked there between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. today and tomorrow. Over to you. Kim, thank you. 633 is your time now. New from overnight. The 2019 Kids Count in Michigan information has just been released. Yes, and it has some alarming findings on child well-being. Local force Nick Monticelli breaks down the numbers and shows us what issues kids are facing here in Metro Detroit. Nick, good morning. Good morning. I want to be clear here. This is not count day for school district. This is a program called Kids Count, a report, 44 pages put together to talk about things like neglect, child abuse, poverty, teen pregnancy, all of it scheduled to outline exactly what it's like to be a kid in Michigan. It is 44 pages long and features a lot of artwork from kids. They were asked to draw pictures of what it's like to be a kid in Michigan, but for the adults, we're interested in the numbers. The first, an alarming increase in child abuse and neglect cases of 29.5%. Better reporting methods can attribute to some of the higher numbers, but there are other discouraging factors as well. Things like the opioid epidemic um, have had a, you know, an impact on it, but also things like um, housing, uh, affordable housing is a really big deal. As far as poverty goes, despite a 20.6% drop in the state child poverty rate, one in five kids are still living in poverty. It really begs the question, is that acceptable? Are we willing to, to kind of accept the fact that one in five kids is going to live in poverty? And on top of that, we have some pretty significant disparities, whether you're looking at age, our youngest kids are more likely to live in poverty. Um, kids of color are more likely to live in poverty. The report also shows expectant mothers are not getting adequate prenatal care. And finally, a good number to report a 30% drop in teen births. We need to continue, you know, doing what we're doing as far as using evidence based programming to drive down teen birth rates. But it also means that um, we can't take our foot off the gas here because we still have a lot of work to do in this area. Now again, the report is quite lengthy, but it really is an interesting read. If you'd like to take a look at it, we have posted on our website at click on Detroit.com. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All right, thanks, Nick. It is 635. We want to get to some stories that we're following from all across Metro Detroit this morning. And those are stories out of Sterling Heights and Romulus, but we'll begin here in Clinton Township for you this morning. A man is now in jail after being accused of strangling his landlord and stealing her $17,000 engagement ring. Tia McLean was heading to the garage to help her roommate, 48 year old Shane Fountain, find his wallet. But once inside, she says that Fountain had a completely different plan in mind. When I'm all down on the ground, he does my hands. He puts one over my mouth. He does my feet. Then he comes back to my hands and he works at my ring. So while being choked by McLean, uh, I should say while being choked, McLean actually pretended to lose consciousness to get Fountain to stop choking her and at work. He did flee and she was able to call police. Police arrested him at an Amtrak station all the way down in Washington, D.C. They also found her engagement ring at a Detroit pawn shop. Fountain is now facing multiple assault charges. Over to Romulus now, a video from inside of a 7-Eleven store shows an armed robber pointing a gun at the clerk's face. This happened last Tuesday after three men walked into the store just before midnight. Two of the men grabbed cash from the registers while the third man waited at the door. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but the three men were last seen running towards West Village Estates on, on Ecourse Road. 
And a suspected drunk driver in Sterling Heights is in even more trouble after trying to pull a fast one on police. The high speed chase lasted nearly four minutes and after being handcuffed, the man told police that he started running because he thought that he had warrants, but police later found he did not have warrants, but is in a lot of trouble now. Still ahead, fine dining on the Avenue of Fashion in downtown, or I should say on Detroit's northwest side. A brand new restaurant offering a fun tableside experience, bon and we're featuring it for Tasty Tuesday. Plus, Jason is here. Good morning. Good morning, District Detroit, the home of Little Caesars Arena. It's also supposed to be the home to hundreds of residential units, hip restaurants, small businesses, but it's that promise that is going unfulfilled, the story now getting unfortunately national attention. Rhonda. Thank you, Jason. Take a look at this. If you see it, swat it. The bug everyone in Michigan is being urged to watch out for. That's next. And we do. Welcome back, everybody. Does this pretty creature with speckled wings, long legs, a bold splotch of red look well, too much like it can do some damage. Well, if you think not, think again. There's a warning, experts and warning Michiganders about spotted lantern flies. That's what this is, and it's a native of Northeast Asia, of all places. They're making their way across the East Coast. Lantern flies in Pennsylvania seem attracted to plants that Michiganders cherish, such as wine, uh, grapes, cherries, and hops. Experts believe that the lantern flies could arrive in Michigan on cars and they tend to lay eggs on them. So watch out. Oh boy. Well, when I get to this, help me Hank consumer alert for you this morning. Target voluntarily recalling nearly half a million wooden toys because apparently they are a choking hazard. The recall includes eight bullseye playground toys, either sold separately or as part of a set. And they were sold between October and November of last year. The target says that there have been reports of the wheels detaching and one toy missing a wheel when it was open. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported, but for the serial numbers of the affected toys, go to our website, click on Detroit.com. Well, the city of Detroit is under the national spotlight, and it's certainly not in a way that we would hope for. Yeah, Jason, back in studio with us this morning. And Jason, HBO is actually set to release a, uh, a special on District Detroit, and it's not a good thing necessarily. It'll air tonight on HBO's Real Sports, and we'll focus on that huge development that was supposed to have been around Little Caesars Arena, but those keeping watch say there are fewer small businesses and residential areas now than when it started. It was a busy, bustling night around Little Caesars Arena with the Pistons playoff game. But around a few corners in what the Illiches and Olympia have dubbed District Detroit, things aren't as busy as some would like. 700 units of uh, new residential hasn't happened. Millions of dollars of parking has. Francis Grunow, chair of the Neighborhood Advisory Committee, says the Illich's promise of 50 blocks of commercial, retail, and residential development has gone unfulfilled. From day one, they promised to do this stuff in parallel, to build the arena, but also work on these other uh, aspects of building the neighborhood, and they have not done that. Last April, phase two of District Detroit was announced, complete with renderings, but one year later, none of those six projects appear to be close to completion. You're putting up more parking lots, more parking lots, but what about residential? And many who live here know it. I mean, I can understand the bottom line, the bottom dollar is about making that dollar, but what about the people that's gonna make you that dollar and spend their dollars that in your businesses? And, and promises you, were made. And if you're not keeping your promises, then why should I spend my money? I think just telling this story and making people aware of what else the district was supposed to be and what it yet could be um, is really what we need to you know, focus on. Now, the story is drawing a lot of reaction on social media on the Local 4 Facebook page. You can share your thoughts as well, by the way. David says, I thought this was a five-year plan. The, the five years not up yet. Linda says, promises are made to be broken. Didn't you even hear that or ever hear that? Uh, John, their primary goal was to get the stadium up and running. Now they can focus on the other parts of the deal. The true money in that deal was the stadium. And to that, Ken says, more of the new Detroit strikes again. And again, sound off. Everett, back to you.
All right, Jason, thank you. And it's 644, everybody. And the latest season of The Voice continued with another week of cross battles performances. And Detroit's very own Beth Griffith Manley took center stage and slayed as she hopes to advance to the next round. Listen. I, I put a spell on you. Cause you're mine. Mm -hmm. She did phenomenally. Make sure you tune in to find out if Beth advances to the next round. The results show airs tonight at 9 right here on Local 4. You can still vote for her. There are 15 minutes left before the vote. Voting closes all across the country at 7 a.m. Yes. You can vote by downloading the Voice app. You can vote for her there or you can vote on NBC.com slash voice vote. And I voted... 20 times for her yesterday. Yeah, I did too. And her performance gives you goosebumps. So definitely look it up and watch it if you haven't already. It is amazing and definitely putting herself in the top performances that we have seen yet. We think, think she could win it all, all Paul. I, I think she can. I really think she can. She has got it all. So let's let's go. <laughs> let's do this thing. All right. It is a mild start to the day. Look at this. 58 in uh, Detroit at City Airport. 58 in Howell. 60 in Lapeer, so very mild to start the day. 62 right now down at Monroe. And look at this storm pin. Hey, if you didn't see our coverage of this over the past couple of days, there's that albino deer in Kensington Park. That was posted on storm pins by Kim's mom, Kathy. Kathy DiGiulio. Thanks, Kathy. Really pretty. That's a great shot of a very rare and beautiful creature there. Just stunning. All right, you see the swirl here. I've been showing you all morning. This is compact low pressure sliding across the northern half of the lower peninsula with a trailing cold front that is generating scattered showers and thunderstorms in the area. As you can see, there's not a lot of real estate being covered. There's a lot more dry than wet on this map, but where it's wet, it's really wet. And so we have really the most notable activity right now in eastern Oakland County. Uh, this little cell right here passing through Leonard Addison Township over to the Romeo area. This one right here, Rochester Hills over to the north side of Shelby Township. This one right here passing through the south side of Troy towards Sterling Heights. And this is all over the next hour or two. And then as this stuff moves out, watch what happens. We actually dry out and the cold front itself comes through with almost no fanfare, maybe a stray shower or two. Once the front goes through, it gets windy. Sunshine develops for the afternoon rush hour, so make sure you have the sunglasses. And then tomorrow, lots of sunshine. Tomorrow is going to be easily the best day of the week. So forecast for today, we're going to see again that early morning shower or thunderstorm and then 66 for the high midday into the early afternoon. Then temps start slipping a bit during the afternoon and again it gets kind of windy tomorrow. Weather radio campaign day at the Meyer in Ann Arbor on Ann Arbor Saline Road. We'll see you there. 66 the high a beautiful day. 68 Thursday as the clouds increase and then we have temperatures that kind of slip a bit heading into the weekend. Right now Saturday daytime looks dry but some showers move in Saturday night into Sunday morning. Kim. All right. Thank you Paul. Some damp roadway ways this morning, so keep that in mind for your commute. But just one problem to get around. It's over on southbound I-75. We're looking at an accident here just past Verner Highway. Your right lane is blocked, so you will see a little bit of a slowdown in that area. Give yourself a few extra minutes. Now it's the best time of the week. It is Tasty Tuesday. In 1968, the band Three Dog Night released a song that said, One is the loneliest number. If that's true, today's Tasty Tuesday will never be lonely. You can now book a table for two at table number two. The restaurant opened its doors for the first time Easter Sunday, adding to the growing food lineup on Detroit's Avenue of Fashion. We're bringing the old school method of uh, restaurant back. Put your pinkies up because table number two, all about traditional fine dining with pizzazz. It was quite impressive to see the chef come out and flambe a bananas foster right at your table. Uh, or uh, coming out and be able to describe the steak that you're getting ready to eat, uh, and he's gonna carve it right in front of you. So that's what we wanna get back to. So a dinner and a show, two for the price of one. Chef Omar says he wants to bring that wow factor to every meal, and that starts with the ingredients. Uh, fresh seafood, uh, we're getting it local. Uh, our steaks are hand cut. Uh, by a local butcher, downtown Detroit, Fairway. So two things you're guaranteed to find at table number two, seafood and steaks. We're doing some amazing uh, pairings with fresh herbs. We have an herb garden uh, and microgreens in the back of the restaurant. And two more things you'll find, more seafood and more steak. Bon appetit. 
Oh, oh my indeed. goodness. Indeed. Look Take at this look. spread. It's gorgeous. This is, they decorated my kind of very place. well. Ah. All right, before we get to the food, if you're wondering where the name comes from, yeah. Chef Omar likes cooking for couples. Table ah. for two. Very nice. Okay. And right. Chef Omar is absolutely awesome. He has been around the Detroit area for a long time, and he is presentation and food wise Ron the best. stamp of approval <laughs> and he's a twin too it's a grilled salmon that salmon. we just saw there I'm okay. getting right into that. we have a porterhouse right oh. here in front of the salmon as Paul digs into the salmon that looks oh, yeah. juicy the there goodness it is. all right deconstructed fish tacos up here mm. okay you see, mm. Nice presentation, nice. right? I feel Aww. bad tasting it, but I want to try it. Oh, one. come on. You don't feel it. too These bad. These would be very popular in Sterling Heights. Wow. Uh, up front here, we have the lamb chops. Should I try it? Jason, you've got I your... love lamb yeah. chops. You know me. I'm a That's sucker for that. Oh, mm -hmm. so that looks delicious. And then back here in the jar is a presentation of fried chicken, southern oh. fried chicken. Right up my alley. Who thinks of that, putting salmon it in a jar? Good. That is cool. Paul says the salmon is great. Salmon is good. Yeah. Smoked um, bre beef short rib. With Fago Rock and Rye Barbecue. Okay. A little Detroit spice to mm -hmm. it. Okay, the deconstructed fish taco is delicious. Ooh, we have Maryland good. style uh, crab Maybe cakes. So We've got sesame encrusted ahi tuna, mm. fish and grits, walleye. It's, I mean, they're gourmet wow. up and down the table. Oh my so, gosh. Uh, nice this job. is like yeah. no joke. Yeah, right? Nice job. Excellent. Way to go. Oh, oh this is beautiful. Yeah, Congratulations. Ahi tuna. What did you try? Ahi tuna. Mm. So Table number two is offering a free side of Bananas <laughs> Foster when you buy two entrees. The deal is dine-in only. The restaurant is located on Livernoy, mm. or to some of you, Livernoy's, near 7 Mile <laughs> no. on Detroit's west side. You know some people say Livernoy's, I know, Never. it's not Livernoy's. We Never. know that, Paul. <laughs> it opens at noon. For this Tasty <laughs> Tuesday segment and all the others, head to the scene on, on 4 page at clickondetroit.com. Very nice. Everything is delicious. Fried chicken over here. You've been having trouble I'm getting having in a there. Trouble. You better just pick it up and bite yeah, it up, Rhonda. I'm on TV, Rhonda. <laughs> All right. I don't know these people that well yet. All right. I'll get to today's <laughs> trivia while you take a taste of that chicken. Mm-hmm. Mm good. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's take a look at our question because it is apparently National English Muffin Day. So we wanted to know where was the first English muffin created? It was created in New York City. New York City? Really? <laughs> we have a Termina's gift card, and it's going to Sean Saka from East Point for guessing the answer correctly. Congratulations to you. We'll be back in a moment with your stories to watch for. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. We continue to follow the very latest in the deadly Easter bombings in Sri Lanka. The death toll has now risen to 310 people, and at least 40 suspects have already been arrested in connection with these bombings. It's believed a memo warning of the attacks was issued weeks ago, but was ignored. The country's defense minister says that the bombings were carried out in retaliation for the mosque attacks in Christchurch, New Zealand last month. We might learn more after the 2019 kids count report was released overnight, showing Michigan continues to see increases in child abuse and neglect. It also shows one in five kids are still living in poverty. To view the full report, you can visit the homepage of our website, click on Detroit.com. And Kelly Stafford is getting national attention on her recovery from brain surgery. The wife of Detroit Lions quarterback Matt Stafford recently had brain surgery in the 8 o'clock hour of the Today Show that will be taking a closer look at the road ahead for Stafford. All right, thanks a bunch, Rhonda. And we are still watching a scattered area of showers and thunderstorms crossing the area. Most of us are actually not getting rain, but there are a few bigger areas of downpours here. This one right here, eastern, uh, moved out of eastern Oakland County. It's now in western Macomb County. And then further to the north, another batch in northern Lapeer County. There may be even some pea-sized hail there. Now, for the kids at the bus stop this morning, again, this scattered shower or thunderstorm early this morning. But then the afternoon bus stop is windy and dry with mid-60s for a high temperature. As far as your seven-day forecast is concerned mid 60s today same tomorrow with lots of sunshine tomorrow is the best day of the week and then upper 60s on Thursday and then we have some cool down coming where it looks like we're going to be in the mid 
to upper 50s for highs as we head into the weekend, Kim. All right, thank you, Paul. Watch out for those wet roadways if you have them in your commutes. And then also an accident on southbound I-75 just past Burner Highway. Your right lane is blocked. Jason, what's coming up with Live in the D today at 10 a.m.? Go inside a national treasure that's located in our own backyard. It's a place rich in history, but you may not have visited mm. before, so go go. Plus, we're helping you with the perfect feast for those graduation parties. And do you really know what should be online and what you should buy online versus in the store if you want to save money? We'll tell you. 10 a.m. live in the D. All well, right. the only place you can get this, our Tasty Tuesday yeah. feature today, it's called Table Number Two, a new restaurant right on the Avenue of Fashion in Detroit's West Side, right there on Livernois near Seven Mile.